Oh, would you look at that, how the tables have turned and the flip-flops flopped over. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're... I should wait for this to zoom out. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to witness the power and the greatness of the Windows operating system. But Ed, blasphemy, you reached, switched over from Arch Linux. Calm down, first of all. Go fix a config file or something, bitch. So this happened about a year ago when I decided to switch over to Linux as my main operating system. And quickly enough, all the cult members started approaching me and listing out all the different benefits that it would happen as soon as I joined the Arch Linux ecosystem. And spending a year in there, I feel like you lied to me. Lisa, you lied. Here's the thing. For a lot of use cases, I feel like Arch Linux got me 90% there and maybe 100% there for all of you that just want to do programming on it. But as soon as I reach out from that little bubble and I try to do something else like content creation or gaming, it all falls apart a bit too quickly. Do you see how I'm cut out now? There's no background. This is using NVIDIA's background removal magic that are drivers that only work on OBS on Windows and I think maybe Mac, but definitely not on Arch. Do that. Come on, show me your little yay install. Now, before we try out the WSL experience on Windows, I briefly want to mention a couple of problems that really pulled the camels back when it comes to Arch Linux and it made me switch over. So one of the most important softwares for me is OBS. And OBS uses Pipewire uh, that essentially handles audio and video for you. Now, on my Arch, my audio always had a weird hussing sound. It went like this. Tee! I guess that's not hussing. Hissing? You decide. Uh, I thought it was tinnitus, but turns out, no. It's something with the driver. Tried it on my Mac, it was fine. And here, by the tests and everything I ran, it sounds fine. So it turns out it's only that. Now, I tried reinstalling OBS. I tried reinstalling Pipewire, and I just couldn't get there. Same thing with this cutout now. As you can see, we're using NVIDIA's magic background removal. There was also problems where sometimes the encoding would leave my audio out of sync with my video. And sometimes it would happen halfway through the video. I never figured it out why. Uh, and I never had the same problems on the Mac or on the Windows beforehand. And you need to decide now if you're going to go down a big, large path and rabbit hole and figure out why it happens. Another thing is, for example, I couldn't record with Pipewire up to 4K on my monitor. It just never got it to work. 2K was the max resolution I could do it at. And I spent, no joke, about three hours trying to figure out why. And then I just gave up on it because... I'm not going to spend a whole month figuring something out that I just want to work, essentially. So it's it's things like this that, whilst the customizability is really nice and you can get the system looking up, you know, like probably the best looking system out there uh, with all the configs and all the different packages you can use, it's the actual time invested in doing all of that is outweighing all the productivity right now and just the ease of use. Now, it's been a while since I used Windows, so let me just have a quick refresher here. Wow, the search is still absolutely trash. Sometimes I search OBS and it pulls up the web search for OBS rather than the actual application. When would I ever want to do that? It makes no sense. Glad to see they're still pumping a shit ton of ads, uh, even in the search bars. This is just great to see. Nothing says peak experience than seeing cut the rope uh, in your control panel here. Is this something new that they added here where you have the little check mark as well when you click on the video? I don't remember that being there, uh, but I don't know why. I mean, I see the blue background. I'm guessing that means that it's selected, but thanks for double checking with me, I guess. Oh, no, wait, if I turn that on, this still stays highlighted. What does that mean then? Oh, I'm hovering. Okay, never mind. Oh, they added new buttons here. This is new AI actions. What can I do with this? Remove background with paint. Okay, let's click on that, see how it does. Damn, that was pretty good, actually. Let's see what else was there. Send to, to my phone. 
Phone link needs an update. Oh, classic. So I almost get excited that this was gonna be a seamless experience because it just like automatically started connecting with my phone. And I'm sure it is, but even on my phone, I have to get this application and sign in to Microsoft and to God knows what. So let's just leave it for now. Okay, we're getting distracted. Let's try out Windows with WSL. So it's this simple command here, W install. Now what convinced me to switch over and try this WSL out is that it's really cool. You're running full Linux inside Windows and you can open applications in here. So I could run Kitty from here. I can run NeoVim and the display would actually output in Windows. So it would stream over the display from Arch or whatever Linux uh, over here on the Windows side without really compromising any performance. So let's try to run this. It's, it's broken already. Okay, so you run the command WSL, install, and then the distro you want. I'll do Ubuntu, that'll be more than plenty for me. But again, you can do Arch or whatever else you want. Okay, there we go. We are back in the game. We are officially on Linux, and I should be able to do CD and go back to the root directory. And there we go, LSA, awesome. We are good to go. So let's try installing NeoVim and some of the basic tools that I'd be using and see how it works. Okay, it finally worked. I forgot to do sudo update, but now we got NeoVim and it's working perfectly fine. Now I can also get a new terminal rather than using uh, this terrible, terrible PowerShell that Windows offers for you. Let's see if we can get something like Ghosty or Kitty up and running. I think I'll go with Alacrity actually. There we go, ladies and gentlemen, have a look at that. That is streaming over from, it crashed. It won't let me resize it. Every time I run it and I try to resize, it just crashes for me. Oh, okay, that doesn't do it anymore, but it did beforehand. But there we go, ladies and gentlemen, we are running the terminal. Uh, I'm gonna try to see if I can make this font size a bit bigger. And now I can run NeoVim in here as well, native through Linux. So I'm running PowerShell through WSL, through Alacrity to open up NeoVim. That's pretty cool. Oh, it looks like they also added a little introduction here to how to use WSL. How you can do cross OS file access as well. You got GPU acceleration. I'm just getting so excited about this because I get to use all the Windows applications, especially for streaming as well, for editing. And I can just stream all the programming content within this window here that runs in Linux. Now, since WSL is essentially just streaming over the display, uh, I could essentially run Chrome inside Linux and see it here in my windows. So let's, let's give that a go. Let's install Chrome. Okay. Why can't you locate that? Maybe have you looked under the, the sofa? Okay, so now we can try running Google Chrome stable. And look at that. That is opening up inside the Linux here for me. Awesome, it works. This is great. So I can test and run stuff here as well. Uh, I wonder if it works if I open up Alacrity and then run it through there. Let's do that. And then in this little window, I'll try Google Chrome stable. Let's make this bigger run this and it does. Awesome. Now it would be nice if we could make this a little bit bigger when we open it up, because if we just keep this PowerShell, first of all, I don't think I want to keep this, uh, because if I run an application within here, it's going to block the terminal for me. So I'd have to click plus and make a new one, but now I'm back here and I don't want to be back here. I want to be straight where I was left off. So if I can get Alacrity or Ghosty here with multiple tabs, then I don't need to worry about that. Uh, I'm not sure if Alacrity has tabs, I forgot, but can I run Alacrity twice here? I don't think so. Actually, I shouldn't really care too much about that. I should just do Tmux anyway. So I'll get that set up as well and working. But first let's do the font size. So if I do an LSA, I should have a config here that I could go into, cd config, and it should be here. If it's not, I think we can create a file for this. Okay, to get this working, looks like we're gonna need to create a directory that's called Alacrity. There we go, let's cd into it. And then in here, you make a YAML file uh, that's called the same thing. So let's do that. Oh, I have to touch it. Touch Alacrity 
YAML. There we go. And then we can kneel them inside of it. So I'll change the font size to something like 24. I want it quite big for tutorials as well. So let's close out of that one. And if we run Alacrity now, uh, whoa. Okay, something bad happened, but looks like it did get a little bit bigger. The screen size is still open quite small, unfortunately. So why do they call it columns and not rows here? Is lines the height? Let's try it out. What if I do 100 here? Would that make the height bigger? Oh, it doesn't even open up anymore. Why? What happened? Okay, is, is you're scared of the big value? Is 80 fine with you? Well, it hates it now. It doesn't want to do it at all. Fine, I'll leave it to how it was. Jeez. Was it 40? Okay, we'll keep it 40. Can we go 50 at least? Can we see what 50 looks like? Fuck. Okay, it's working. We're back in business. This is the best thing ever. Okay, so now we got this going. And I also installed Tmux so I can get that going. And look at that. It works. I got bad zero down there. Let me create a new window. Boom. And then I can full screen this. And I can make this look pretty. And we are in business. Okay. You know what? This is not too bad, is it? So I'll spend maybe another half a year to a year with this and let you know how it works out. Hopefully it does. Uh, if it doesn't, we still have the Mac Mini as a backup plan. Uh, but it's been everything's been working the way I want it to. No problems whatsoever. And I know a lot of people hate Windows, and I can be in the same camp as well. But it was really nice to just kind of have everything working straight out the gate uh, in terms of applications to use. So let me know what you think. Hit the like, will ya? Come on, let's get this channel up to a million. A million subs, we're not far away. Okay, I'll catch you guys in the next one.